Planet X TV. Belgian Waffle Ride is a very long bike race, the likes of which there is none in the U.S. I think it's a, an adventure is the best way to describe it. Um, no one really knows what to expect. It's an extreme challenge. In a way, how I see it, it's a, a masterpiece for a cycling event. I don't want to watch anything. I don't want to know anything. I know it's going to be torturous. I think this year it's going to be harder than anything we've seen in the past. The distance is, is bigger than any other pro-level race in the U.S. This year it's 143 miles. We have 800 starters in the Belgian Waffle Ride, and there's a couple hundred people doing the Belgian Wafer Ride, half of the distance. And I suspect about half will finish. The great thing about it is I think it'll be an achievement just to get to the finish line. There's quite a deep list of athletes here competing. I'm really afraid. Planet X TV. Hey, everybody have a great ride up there today. Stay safe, have fun. Beer and waffles, I can't wait. <laughs> Bring it. Am I ready? I don't know if anyone can be ready for this. 140 miles with a lot of climbing, a lot of dirt. You, you can't be ready. This is my first BWR. It's, uh, I don't know, here it's pretty torturous. My approach this year is uh, just ride my bike hard. This year I'm prepared for it. I know it's gonna happen, I know it's gonna hurt, so I'm excited. Yeah, I've got no idea what to expect out there, um, except that I wanna hurt myself doing it, you know, and then do everything I can to be at the front. I still don't really want that much suffering, so I'll just take it as a fun event and do what I can do. It's good getting to meet a bunch of new people and, and do a different sport, so I'm going to savor every second of it. Or at least I'm saying that now. <laughs> yeah, baby! Is he happy? Four years ago when I started it, my vision was to make it the most unique cycling event in the country, so four years later it's kind of neat to see it blossoming the way it is. The event's growing tremendously. And people from, it's not only just all over the the country, but all over the world, seem to know about it. It's uh, getting quite a reputation. There has been such a buzz around it. It's just the event to do. You never know what you're really going to encounter. Water crossings and dirt and sand and, and hills and all those challenging things on one bike on one day make for uh, an adventure. And I think people want some adventure, maybe even potential drama. They want a challenge and they want to overcome it. They want to drink Lost Abbey Belgian Ale at the end. It forces you to think about your equipment, it forces you to think about how you're training, it makes you do some skills that you wouldn't necessarily need on the road. So I think that's what makes it super unique is that he throws a huge curveball with just adding dirt and it adds so many different variables to the event. Each year the women's field has grown. I think we had only one female the first year, Nicole Duke. And then every year the women have grown and grown and grown. 
We had probably 60 or 70 signed up this year, but the women have their own heat because we wanted to give them their own spotlight and have them have their own proper race and not have it be fettered by men. So they get to roll out with their own CHP, their own media vehicle, their own support crews to allow them to have a great experience racing. The fact that there's going to be an entire women's wave is awesome because we'll be able to actually ride with each other as opposed to if we're along with the men, you're always kind of like looking for the ponytails. <laughs> you can have tactics in an actual race with the women. Obviously, it's a, there's some camaraderie because you're going to be suffering through seven, eight, nine hours of this. And uh, so we all kind of like go into battle together. That's a little bit unusual, a little bit different. You know, obviously there's teams and teammates and tactics, but it's a, there's a little bit of a brotherhood out there, I think, when we, uh, when we roll off, because uh, some of the guys aren't going to make it. You know, some guys are going to have to turn back and have a mechanical mishap, or just the physical toll uh, will keep them from the finish line. That's kind of what makes this ride unique, is it's not just a ride where everybody can finish. It's a ride where the tough people will finish, you know, and like the truly committed to making it to the end, because you don't just go out there and ride 140 miles just on a whim, you know? Like, you have to want to be out there the whole day, and you have to want to finish, you know? And you have to really push yourself. I love the uniqueness of the event, and, you know, the fact that it's like there's all these sections that will crush your soul. There's also all the, you know, costumes and cobbles, the beer garden, and, you know, it puts a smile on your face and makes you happy to be part of it. Spy Belgian Waffle Ride is patterned after the spring classics that happen in Belgium. So this time of year, you have these long bike races that are 120, 130, 165 miles. And they go through little hamlets and they go up and down and up and down. There's no real mountains there. So it's just this series of undulating hills. And the races are punctuated by these sectors where they have pave, which is cobblestone, or dirt or mud. And they're really tricky. So. I thought, why not bring that whole sensibility to San Diego and to California and to the U.S.? Pretty much going to test every single skill that a cyclist could have. You've got gravel roads or, or dirt roads, but you've also got single, single track dirt roads like a, you ride on a mountain bike. I'm looking forward to the dirt sections a lot because I think that's going to be the hardest and most difficult part of the course. We've had rain this morning, so it could be mud. You've got long sections of road, you know, which is obviously normal for riding on the road, and then you've got climbs, you know, climbing uphill, downhill. The ride starts at Lost Abbey this year. Um, the route, I'm not entirely familiar with. <laughs> There's a neutral section where we roll out in waves with the CHP for the first 18 miles. Then we hit the Switchenberg, the first dirt section, which is about a mile long. And it's got a bit of a climb to it to help separate riders. Then we're supposed to ride in the longest and hardest dirt section, which is called St. Lusardi. But the rain left it too muddy with clay to even make it 400 meters without having to dismount. So we circumnavigated that sector on the roads and continued for another 30 kilometers before the first climb, and then a descent on Bandy Canyon. And then we hit this trail called Sandy Bandy, which 
parallels Bandy Canyon Road, but it's really sandy, so the whole time you're going like this, you should slide and slip, and people are gonna crash. There's ruts that could take you down, there's sandy portions that will just send you off into the bushes. Oh, oh, shit. Sorry, I didn't get that. You all right, man? Good to go. Nice. We head further west, into another part of Escondido, and then we climb up to this fantastic climb. It's the hallmark of the first lap, and it's called Cougar Pass. And it's this dirt gravel road that's carved into the side of a canyon. Eventually we wind our way back to the Lost Abbey for the end of the first lap, where there's a fun little detail we added called the Abbeyburg Forest. It's a cobblestone section that we made, and we did that to bring a little touch of Belgium to the finish, which happens to be right where the beer garden is. But more importantly, it's the start of the second longer and more difficult lap. 70 more. <laughs> Somebody locked up some brakes and everybody came together real quick and kind of went out. And... People started falling over top of me. Some guy just like came out of nowhere and just like clipped my front wheel doing 20, so. It would've been fun to finish second lap, but hey, it's racing. Now we're gonna drink some beer. Lemon Twistenberg was the first dirt section last year. This year it comes way late in the game. It comes at 80 some odd miles. And by then, you're kind of alone and dejected and wondering why you got yourself into this mess. You come down this hill and you're braking and you're hoping that your brakes are going to slow you down enough to make the turn onto this big, huge, beautiful bridge. Then you cross over Del Dio's Gorge and then you head up the trail, which is very sandy and rocky. If you actually stop for a second and look where you are, you go, oh my God, this San Diego place is amazing. But you don't do that. You just, you're trying to stay upright, you're trying to chase someone, you're trying not to get caught. You're in paradise, you're in this amazing place, but you have no idea. At mile 112 and a half, riders are back to St. Lusardi to do the reverse of what was supposed to happen earlier in the day. But five hours later, it's mostly dry. It's immensely easier in this direction, but it's still long, tricky, and challenging. It's 6.5 kilometer section with lots of craziness, like water crossings, a couple of them actually, and places where you have to dismount. And by here, you're seeing Aztec temples and mariachi bands and other things that aren't even there. And the end of this section reduces everyone to having to walk up the hill to push their bikes or carry them. And the only thing that really keeps them going on is that they want to make it to the oasis where the scantily clad people are. Planet X TV. a day's work.
So you've been out there for seven, probably eight, nine hour day, and you start the ultimate climb on the course, the steep pitches of Double Peak. I wanted to hit the highest point in North County, the most difficult one. I wanted to include that in, which is probably not so Belgian-esque, but you know, Belgian doesn't look up. Having that climb at mile 130 is going to be, I think, a lot of people are going to dread it. <laughs> the climbing is going to hurt people. It's going to dig deep in the people's muscles. You've raced for seven hours. It doesn't matter if you're climbing uh, Mount Palomar or you're climbing over a highway bridge. It can hurt your legs. It's not that long, but it's so steep. It really does force a lot of people to paper boy and zigzag up the hill and use everything they have just to get to the top. And there's people there helping push people up because it's really that steep. Double peak at the end? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be pretty special. I think it's a really fitting uh, finale to what's gonna be a pretty awesome day. One of the other really cool things about this race is that there's the sprinter's jersey, there's the king of the mountains jersey, the races within the race, there's different categories you can win. So the most logical one you would think is all the person who climbs the hill the best, so the king of the mountain. They just have to ride from the base of the hill to the top of the hill. There's three different climbs. If their combined times are faster than anyone else's, they win the king of the mountain. So they win the glorious polka dot Belgian waffle ride jersey. There's also the sprint. It's three different sections, typically between one kilometer and one mile in length. People that want to sprint those in the middle of the race and try and get the fastest time there can win the king of the sprint. The most coveted is the hard man jersey, which is the blue jersey. So the Belgian hard man or hard woman jersey goes to the person that exhibits the most giving nature for the other cyclists in their pack. So someone who's driving the front, putting forth an effort to deliver other people the heartfelt one is the Kudos Award, and that's in honor of our friend Udo Hines, who was killed a couple of years ago. The Kudos Award is for someone who exhibits the most passion and excitement and wants to help others and bring fun to the event, because that's the kind of guy that Udo was. Finally, there's the purple jersey, the Freddie Freeloader Award, which really isn't an award at all. It's a dubious distinction. And that's for the rider that refuses to do any work for the group that he's in. Or worse, causes people to crash, or even almost crash, is abusive to other riders, or is otherwise completely selfish. That's the one nobody wants to get, but the one that Michael likes to give out the most. There's only one award that I'm worried about, and that's who wins the race. I think most of the buzz around the event is created just because Spy's got a really unique an exciting way of promoting things. It's not just your average bike ride. You know, they do a really good job taking care of the riders, making it fun, but still making it serious, and making it hard, you know, and um, it kind of defines, though, what the brand's all about. The reason why it's so fun is that Spy has a happy disrespect for the usual way of looking at life, so everything we do is unusual. So if we're gonna do a bike race or a surf contest or a motocross race, it's gotta be unusual and different. So the Spy Belgian Waffle Ride is different, different than any other bike race. But it's also the energy that the Spy people bring and the friends of Spy people and the Cello Pacific groups and the Wolf Packs and all the, the local racers and teams, the Ride Cyclery people, they bring an energy but mostly the spy staff, they bring the costumes, they bring their friends, they bring energy. And all along the course, they're out there surprising people with something like, what the hell is a unicorn doing here? Or a witch, or a priest. There's a woman dressed as a, a waffle last year. It's a chance to wear costumes and be crazy in the spring. You know, the costumes and people running on beside the, the race is always pretty exciting. The first year we did the race, there was a section where we went through a mobile home park and then onto a trail. And this woman was out there in her bathrobe with her junk hanging out and a broom. And she was swinging it as riders were trying to get on the trail. Get out of here, you can't ride through here. 
damn cyclists. And so every year we've brought her back to life. This is the third year we've had the Challenged Athletes Foundation as the beneficiary. We love working with them. They're an awesome local organization that takes care of athletes that have been injured and gives them the ability to get back to being athletes. And some of their athletes come and compete in the event. Like One Arm Willie now, this is gonna be his third event, maybe even fourth. This is what I remember. That guy's just a stud. Their cause is wonderful. The athletes are wonderful. It's a great marriage. Hundreds of people have passed me. I was just trying to make them feel good. I'm going to keep that work up. Doing it for the team. Planet X TV. Planet X TV. This year's the first year that's at both starting and finishing at Lost Abbey in San Marcos. Our event is Belgian inspired. The Lost Abbey's ethos and what they stand for and what they're about is bringing unique Belgian inspired ales to our country, the Lost Abbey. So it's the perfect marriage for us. They're the perfect host. Ride Cyclery is our local bike shop that is going to have mechanics out there for us. It happens. <laughs> we have SRAM and Mavic out there doing neutral support, so they'll be the vehicles following the different groups. They'll have wheels and tubes and all sorts of things to help riders out. There'll be about eight media vehicles. There are five aid stations with massive amounts of food. The aid stations are a very key role in just getting to the finish. To be able to make it to the next aid station is a, is a, is a big goal. But the fun part about the aid station is when the aid station is actually fun. Spy adds a little extra to the aid stations. Great for me. We take care of the riders quite well. Yeah. Woo. We almost there, right? Almost. I think just like another 110 or so to go. That's it? That's it. Piece of cake. Collided, got lost, got mad because Tinsman didn't wait for me. So then I hit him on double peak. I would have preferred Phil to win, but because he left it, because he didn't wait for me when I flatted, I uh, no gifts, no gifts. So I dispatched him. I thought Cam flatted and the and Hodges, and then he caught me about double peak and just flew by. I was a bit angry when he didn't wait for me when I had a flat size. Then I did wait. And then I sent Victor. Dude. I asked Victor. I would have given you the win. You no, I didn't. Made it no, the last thing I wanted to do was be solo at 50 miles to go. Uh, you what happened? Just I flatted. I yelled out to you. You just kept going. I didn't know exactly what happened, so I waited, and then I sent Victor back. Don't, don't be angry. Oh, I'm not angry. Oh no. It's I'm angry. only disappointed because I wanted you to win. Ah, no. You finally cross that line. You're done. You can't believe you're done. You stop. You take account of everything and the gratefulness is unlike any that you will feel. Both my kids were there hugging and kissing me, which is kind of fun. What's all this? From fixing my tire. It's brutal. <laughs> Lots of mechanical issues, people cutting the course. The whole Lusardi. I had to either walk my bike or push it. That was a long day. So glad to have this over. <laughs> Oh, it was awesome. Never thought about giving up, but the legs wanted to stop. Oh, it's nice to be back. So much fun. Oh, brutal. I think the course beat me today. You know, I uh, met some guys out there and we all kind of suffered together and made our way to the finish line. So uh, it was awesome, awesome. I hated every, every moment of this last uh, 30 or 40K, but uh, I'll be back. How'd it go? It was a fun day. Um, not one of my best showings. It's insanity, but it's awesome. I'll definitely be back.
I went to hell and back. It's the hardest, but most joyful. So I'm looking forward to next year. Do it again. Yay! Only here. 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 Only here.